Davis. Davies. <coughs> uh, Richard Drax, if you can keep down to five minutes, that'll be helpful. Thank you, Richard. So, to be on your termship, uh, Mr. Davis, and the pleasure to follow my honourable colleague and all colleagues who have spoken uh, so clearly. And can I thank my right honourable friend, the member for the Cotswolds, for getting this very important debate at this timely time. Uh, in the short time I have, um, I want to ring the alarm bell on behalf of hundreds of thousands of farmers across the land. What I'm about to say is felt unanimously by farmers, including those in Dorset, who I meet quarterly, and farming organisations like the NFU under the determined leadership of Manette Batters. And be I'm most grateful to the Minister. She came down at my behest to met our farmers, and what I'm about to say, she has heard from the lion's mouth. So there's nothing here that will surprise her. Perhaps this, though. Uh, none of us can see, the farmers, the logic behind much of the government's thinking, and that is a conservative government. It and its ministers seem enthralled to us, to the environmental and wildlife lobbies, who have a role to play, of course, but who are behind the push for this greener agenda, and at the cost of food production. The government has got itself into a pickle. They are replacing the basic payment scheme paid to ensure food resilience and affordability with a system that offers taxpayers' money to take land out of production, in part to, and I quote, improve environment and animal welfare outcomes. The local nature recovery scheme and landscape recovery scheme will see £800 million spent on replacing productive land for both crops and livestock with wildlife habitats like peat bogs and wetlands, nature reserves and tree planting. We all love trees. I plant trees. But I think I recall in the last election, I think the Labour government were going to plant so many millions of trees, I think it worked out about 100 trees a second, or whatever it was. It's just this green mantra doesn't make sense. Common sense is what farmers are desperately calling for. This narrow agenda implies that nature and farming cannot somehow coexist, when for generations it has. When you consider that the words food production were not even in the first agricultural bill. This mad bath, this mad path, not bath, this mad path we're heading down is hardly surprising. And this when you think that our food self-sufficiency has dropped from 75, 78% from my honourable friend to my left in the mid-1980s to 64% now. Where on earth are the policies that we need to grow more or what we are not only good at but produce to the highest standards in the world? We are an island nation, and in the face of any serious adversity, we might not be able to rely on imports. Our island's history should have taught us that basic fact many times. What annoys farmers even more than the misguided green agenda is that the BPS, on which they have relied for so long, is to be removed before its replacement has been fully tried and tested. There are genuine fears that some farmers, in particular the grazing livestock sector, both the lowland and upland, will simply not survive, with the NFU predicting that 80% will become unprofitable. These policies are not just a threat to the farmer, but to the consumer too. As the PUC, the Public Accounts Committee, said in January this year, and I quote, DEFRA has also not explained how the scheme's changes in land use will not simply result in more food being imported, with the environmental impacts of food production being exported to countries with lower environmental standards. I join the NFU in calling for an urgent review of DEFRA's future farming programme for England, including the temporary postponement of direct payment reductions in 2022 and 23. And here again, I agree with my right honourable member for Westmoreland and Lonsdale, who speaks such common sense on this issue and has repeatedly made his point. These new schemes must be piloted as we cannot afford to see them fail. What farmers are crying out for, Mr Chairman, are for secure, fit-for-purpose measures that will sustain food production while, of course, continuing to protect our countryside and all that lives in it. Reckless rewilding, pushed by those with the best of intentions but with a little grip of reality, is a classic example of nonsense. Placing beavers in small Dorset rivers, for example, while no doubt pleasurable to see, would create havoc to river flows and banks and lead to flooding as dams are built and then are no doubt protected by law. The argument to subsidise farmers in some form or other, or not, is a live one. 
If the government wants to see farmers, especially the smaller ones, go to the wall, food prices in ports to rise, and our rural economy to die, then end all support. There's a balance to be drawn, but farmers and food production must be given the priority they deserve.